All right, well, we're back to discuss Insidious Chapter 3, and if you watched our review, we gave it a positive score. We enjoyed it. Um, I recommend still that you see the other two before you see this one. Um, not so much because you're going to miss out on a bunch of things. They don't spoil anything from the other two movies. This movie's a prequel. Um, but you will appreciate some things that are happening uh, if you've seen the other other two films. Um I really expected, based on the fact that it's a prequel and the only real returning character is Lynn Shay, um, the two Ghostbuster guys that show up toward the end are in the other movies too. Um, so that's kind of a surprise that you get if you've seen the other ones is that they show up. But I expected them to make this all Lynn Shay, like all from her perspective. Um, I didn't expect them to really go into detail and they really built the movie to where the girl has about 40 to 50% of the screen time. Like she has, her story is told from her perspective. Um, and Lynn Shay's character is just, um, Elise is just fighting trying to decide if she really wants to get back into this or not and um, having her own set of problems on top of it. And so it had a lot of, there's a lot of plot in the movie. There's a lot of plot and a lot of character development. And I really appreciated that. Um, you know, even Insidious 1 doesn't have that. It doesn't really build the characters so much um, before freaky things start happening you know you get maybe 10 or 15 minutes and then we're into you know is this all happening in rose burns head is their house haunted that kind of thing so yeah i was kind of shocked that um like you said you you expected lynn shay to dominate the screen and i did too because i knew she was the returning character mm-hmm but she she only pops up here and here and there. Well, we get backstory on her that we haven't seen before that's interesting. Uh, but she's conflicted about getting involved in this this particular problem, this particular plot. So, yeah, it's almost, you know, they kind of switch back and forth between her and um, the teenage girl that is in trouble that, you know, is being haunted or her spirit's being taken away or whatever. Yeah. So. It is really hard to think of things to discuss. Um, oh, um, I thought that, like, the monster from the original movies um, pops up at the very, very end of this one. And I thought the monster in this one overall is just pretty weak he looks like just any given zombie from the walking dead basically um he's not particularly scary um there's this girl that turns out to be quinn that is like only partially there physically mm -hmm. um and there's some stuff that just like doesn't add up or make sense but it's like? a horror movie Oh, I mean, like, having part of someone's soul means having, like, their entire body except for their hands, feet, and eyes. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was kind of weird. What's that about? I I think the, f the fact that they kept it, like, when you first see her, she has no face at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but the second time you see her, she her mouth is there. Yeah. And then her hand forms. You know, and I, I thought that was an interesting way to show her decline in the real world. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the demon was weak. Uh, he couldn't breathe, and for some reason he left a blood trail everywhere for no apparent reason. Uh, one of the coolest things in the movie for me was, was really the last... 20 minutes or so when they decided to when, when she did the um, I don't know 
astral projection of herself mm-hmm. into the in, into the hotel or apartment building or whatever they're staying at, and it, it's just a really dark hallway, and she's got this lantern, but. The lantern almost gives off no light whatsoever. Yeah. It's it's almost like it's in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. It's it's really, really well done and it builds a lot of tension because when she does come across something, it's not so much a jump scare, it's just like, oh well. Uh yeah. you know, I just stumbled across something. And they do a good job with like she passes in front of something and it disappears behind her. Um or they do a pretty good job of like hiding someone on the set. Like you're looking at someone and you don't realize it until it moves or that sort of thing. Like a lot of the camera work is really good. I like the camera work where, um, when she's in the hospital and she goes into heart failure and the camera just sort of pans back from her and goes through these doors that are dark. And then it pans over to the left and she's standing there. It's like, that's how they get to the, the further, um, the first time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good film. I would, I would, I would recommend it. So. I, I, I liked it a lot and I would, I would definitely recommend it. So. Cool. Well, if you like the way we do these, please like the video, subscribe, check out all the written video reviews at dalemaxfield.com and thanks for watching.